after a while found the B&B with the police lady and um, I said, yeah, this is it. After finding the hotel, Moretta was sat outside in the police car when something unexpected happened. Yeah, he must have gone there. That's the man. When I just looked up, I was like, oh my God, it's him. And he went up the stairs, and then the police lady took me from the area, and lots of police cars came and they arrested him. And I don't know more what happened to him. A 34-year-old man was arrested and taken to Paddington Green Police Station for questioning. Oh, thank God they've caught this person. How dare he do this? I mean, she might be a vulnerable person. She might be free. Okay, so... When the arrested man was questioned, he gave a very different version of events to Moretta's. I met Moretta on the 25th of February. The man Moretta accused didn't want to be identified, but has spoken to us at length. This dialogue is taken from excerpts of the arrested man's police statement. I met her in the club. I remember it was about 12.45, 1 a.m. I noticed that she was looking towards the table. After that, she approached the table and said, you're gorgeous. Then we talked for a few minutes. Then she kissed me on the mouth. She was wearing a red and black community coat, more like a jumper, a denim skirt, which I was able to see when she lifted the jumper to show it to us, saying that her mother had needed it. And According to the arrested man's statement, after leaving the bar in Bayswater, he headed back to his hotel with Moretta. No one saw us entering the hotel because it's a very quiet hotel. I arrived at the hotel at about 1, 2 o'clock in the morning. She wasn't aware of what was happening, so was I. So this is your room? Yeah, it's temporary. Just, just temporary. Okay. I remember we had left only the bathroom lights on, and then I started to cuddle her. Mm, yeah, that's fair. <laughs> the arrested man told the police that he had had consensual sex with Moretta before falling asleep. The next day, he said they got up at about 12 o'clock. As in Moretta's story, the man said that they did go to a post office, but said Moretta was there by choice and that she looked happy. He also confirmed that they did go to a pub together after leaving the post office, but again told the police that Moretta was there by choice. We were thirsty and I only had water because I didn't drink alcohol during the day. She drank a Coke, we were checking and I just asked her why she didn't bring her home to find out if her baby was well. She said that the baby was with the father. She was also having problems with the husband. Why? What did she say about him? She said that her husband was an asshole. After that, she started to listen to some voicemail in her, her mobile phone, and then she passed me the mobile to listen to one of the messages. It was from the police station. They were saying that they were trying to get in touch with her and for her to telephone them. No, no, fine. You want to say worry. After I heard the message, I got worried. I would be worried. I said that she should probably call one of her friends to let them know that she was all right. Did she? No, she said not to bother. I did not call her back because she has a baby and after I listened to the police message, I got worried and I didn't want to get involved in any sort of problem. There was, to me, I want to stand on. The arrested man's version of events sounded plausible, but could well have been the standard defense. At this stage in the investigation, the police had no reason to doubt Moretta's story and neither did her husband, Toby. He didn't say much when I told him. 
the whole story. Speak as I could about the whole issue. Um, I knew that if she'd have been through that uh, situation, a man being arrested doesn't take away the situation itself. After hearing the arrested man's story, the police re-questioned Moretta about her version of events. She said he had visited the post office with the man, but claimed he had followed her in, and she was there under duress. All I was thinking in my head was just to get to the post office and catch this thing I had in my pocket, or in my bag, and just leave. Moretta also acknowledges going for a drink in a pub with the man she accused. I'm sitting here, at this table over here. I'll be on that side, you'll be on that side. Once again, Moretta says she was followed in and forced to stay against her will. Ten days into the investigation, the police called Moretta back into Paddington Green. But it raised a number of questions for the police. How did the attacker know how to spell Moretta's Norwegian name? And how did he know who her husband was? It was only put to me much more recently how strange uh, it was. I had ID in my bag, so I had my passport in my bag, so they probably looked at it. They asked if I was married, and that's the and they said, uh, what's your um, husband's name? Of? The police wanted to establish whether any person raped. However, when they questioned the landlady at the hotel, she said that she didn't hear anything unusual on that evening. You scream, but you don't scream. Try to make a noise, but you have something over your mouth. And I still can't believe the lady who spawned the house. She didn't hear all the noise, but... The police were also keen to establish whether Moretta had visited the bar in Bayswater, where the arrested man claimed to have met her. As the police tried to find witnesses, Moretta maintained she had no memory of being in the bar. In her hometown of Stavanger, Moretta had a history of blacking out after heavy drinking. It was the evidence that would lead to her arrest. Moretta Underwood claimed to have been abducted outside a pub in West London. She then alleged she was driven to a hotel in Bayswater, forced into an upstairs room where she said she was raped by two other men. Twelve weeks into the investigation, the police were unable to find any evidence that would substantiate Moretta's claims. She was called back to the police station. You need to answer some more questions. The police lady said she called me. Maybe six or seven points, I don't know. We weren't out that long. She drinks very heavily and has alcoholic blackouts. So her memory of the events could appear to be much more traumatic and much more sort of victimizing to her than it actually was. You know, we have CCTV footage of you in the post office and it shows you laughing and smiling. Yeah, that was me when I got my money, just laughing. Does that really account an action of somebody that's been raped? No, I had my money in my overcoat pocket. I knew that I could get home now. I could even get in a taxi. The police said you look so happy on the camera. God, anyone would look happy on the camera. The view footage was crucial in convincing the police that Moretta was making up her story. A series of stills was shown to her solicitor. There were a number of synapses, uh, so I think they all pointed towards that. She was not subjected to any duress whatsoever. She was basically cuddly with this individual. This text message that Toby received, I haven't seen it, you read it. Yes, the, the 